three respond and assist units on the scene. Mike, you guys might as well come on in and we'll just do the door. Please, there's one! We teach them how to shoot, we teach them how to drive. How many drugs have you used tonight, Eddie? That's like asking uh, how many times you have sex today. We just had a report of a drive-by shooting. Open just an open power and smell of marijuana. I need a dog man, he's out on foot in the school. He got up after I hit him. Got a couple of 12 gauge shotguns here. Wow. Don't go, you're going to jail. This program contains actual police footage. No reporters, no recreations. We're just uh, walking up to the scene of a murder that occurred here a few hours ago. Uh, the Indo-Canadian Games have been taking place here in the Wally area of Surrey, and apparently there was a drive-by shooting in which uh, three subjects were shot with an AK-47. Uh, Rocky just came back. He, uh, he's got one of the victims got shot in the shoulder. And one of the guys that got shot in the foot also ID the shooters. And he did it with his own van. How many people got shot? Four. One Four dead. got shot? One in the foot, one in the leg, one in the shoulder, and one dead. Oh. The dead person's been here for about a month. From India? Hmm? From India? Yeah. Uh, around 5.30 this evening, our office received a phone call about a shooting that had occurred here in the area of 128th Street and 104 Avenue. Apparently what had happened that there was a group of Indo-Canadian males who were in the area as part of a family event that was going on at Royal Quantlin Park. Uh, there was apparently a number of soccer tournaments uh, happening over the weekend along with other festive activities. One group of Indo-Canadian males was standing on the west side of 128th Street when a, a vehicle traveling south along 128th Street rolled by and a number of shots were fired from that vehicle. Uh, the scene is now being examined by both our forensic identification specialists as well as investigators from our serious crime unit who have been called in. Uh, it takes a, a, quite a long time in order to uh, get all the evidence from a scene such as this. There were also a large number of people in attendance during the park, or at the park during the time, and obviously we're trying to find out uh, who in the crowd may have seen anything that can give us some information. At this point, we don't have any motive as to what sparked the shooting. That is still part of the investigation. Of course, you know, our objective here is to identify the people who are responsible for it. And any time you have a scene like this, especially at a public event, it's very, very difficult. We have a large crowd here that we have had to, uh, to deal with. Uh, within that crowd, as I said, we have a number of witnesses, and those witnesses uh, may or may not feel comfortable in coming forward and talking with us for various reasons. So one of our big hurdles is to try and break down some of the barriers that may exist and, and to have them come in and speak to us about what they may have seen or been in a position to see. Uh, again, it's very difficult for our members uh, to, to come to this type of a scene uh, and to initiate an investigation that uh, it seems to be nothing more than a senseless and a random killing at this point. There's no need for this uh, type of thing to occur. I spoke with some of the area residents who have lived here for in excess of 40 years, and they're informing me that this is the first time that anything of this nature has ever happened. The traditional problems that they have on the weekend that this event is held deals with crowds, parking, and, uh, of course, drinking. But certainly they haven't had any problems of this magnitude in the past, uh, at least not to their knowledge. So for us, it, it is a serious, very serious scene to have to come into and, and initiate an investigation at a public forum where we've had a number of people in as part of the, the family event. And to, to keep this uh, into a perspective that makes it uh, understandable, it's very difficult to, to try to fathom why someone would open fire on a group of people standing out beside the road. When the shooting first occurred, there was a large group of uh, people at the scene and obviously uh, the noise and commotion drew hundreds and hundreds more. When the uh, first police officers arrived, their first job is to get everyone back, preserve the scene, preserve the evidence. Uh, as you can see, they roped off the area and then uh, called in ident of serious crimes. The members uh, did what they could to determine uh, what had taken place by talking to a number of witnesses. It sounds like uh, there were five or six shots fired, uh, possibly very random. The, uh, the victim of the deceased party was uh, hit in the head. 
once IDENT was here, they scoured the, uh, the immediate area for exhibits or evidence uh, that might help out in the investigation. And you can see those are marked off right now with the uh, numbered cones or pylons that are there. Once the entire scene has been examined, the members will start seizing those items and uh, try and put together the case from there. You can see here uh, some of the exhibits that have been seized by uh, Constable Armstrong of our uh, serious crime section. Uh, she has uh, five casings for bullets and uh, one actual bullet that's been found so far. The uh, five casings were found on the ground in the area of the body and uh, the bullet was found in a tree nearby. Obviously it's a lot more difficult to find the bullets because they could go anywhere and uh, travel a great distance. Witnesses have indicated they heard between four and six shots so uh, what we found here is uh, consistent with uh, the number of shots that were fired. We may have found all the casings at this point. The casings and bullet that have been found uh, our 7.62 millimeter, uh, that caliber is quite consistent with uh, military style assault rifles. Corporal Ward is uh, just searching the area with a metal detector right now. He's a member of our uh, dive team and uh, they frequently use the metal detector for the work uh, in underwater recovery. And so he's just uh, searching the scene now for any uh, extra casings or bullets that haven't been located yet. It looks like he's just found a, uh, another bullet there lodged against the uh, wall where it meets the grass. 351, is that a caliber? 351. Well, handgun caliber, 351 Magnum. That doesn't look like a handgun bullet, though. Okay, handgun shell. Handgun shell. A different caliber. With, uh, with one of the casings that Corporal Ward has just found, it appears that uh, there may actually have been a second firearm involved because this, uh, this last casing that was found is of a different caliber than the uh, ones previously located. Obviously, when we have to uh, deal with a situation like this, it bothers us as much as anyone else. I think uh, the members perhaps get uh, better than most people at dealing with their emotions and uh, how this impacts on them. And I, I think we all come up with different ways of uh, dealing with our emotions and how we feel about this. Um, certainly, we deal with a lot of situations like this. And uh, in some ways, I guess you almost become accustomed to, uh, to seeing these sort of things. But in other ways, you never get used to it. I know for myself uh, what always strikes me the most or has the biggest impact on me when I come to a situation or a scene like this is uh, it really emphasizes to me how short life is or at least how quickly it can be over. Uh, we go to fatal accidents where a person is driving along uh, enjoying the, the sunny day and the next instant they're struck by an impaired driver and their life is over. Or a case like this, this, this fellow apparently had uh, come from India a month ago He's probably enjoying his holidays here, enjoying the games that were going on and uh, the company that he's spending his time with. And instantly, his life is gone. And it just really, uh, really uh, gets me each time as to how quickly it can be over with no warning, no idea. And I guess we have to uh, try and enjoy life as much as we can while we're here. to uh, 3787 Canada Way. It's uh, Starlight Billiards. It's a pool hall uh, frequented by a lot of Asian gang members for this area. And we just got a call that there's some dynamite strapped under a blue Camaro. And uh, so we're gonna go down with the dog. The dog I have is an explosive detection dog. Hello. You're the gentleman that called, obviously, or all soon. I'm the one calling. Okay. It's my friend. That's his car. Usually I park it on the front here, but tonight I have no parking, so I park it on the here. Okay. So as I goes going, I call a taxi to leave. So I see a lot of fire under his car, and the passenger door just down there. So I went there, and when I see the dynamite there, I just switch off the, uh, the fire. Okay. So you guys, you're expert, you can take care of this. Well, we'll go out and take a look. we just get you to... Just out here. Yeah, I seen you standing by it there, yeah. so we'll just get you to stay in here for a while and we'll go take yeah, a look yeah, at no it. Problem. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. 
It was just on fire. I see the fire as I was leaving with the taxi, and uh, I okay. say, what's going on? Somebody tried to burn it or what? So when I came in, I mean close, mm -hmm. I see the dynamite, and I go with my leg like that, and I switch it off. Okay. It certainly looks like it. Burnaby Echo 6. Echo 6. Can you contact EDU for me, please? And uh, have them attend? 10 4. <coughs> uh, what we got, I think, is uh, an actual stick of dynamite. And uh, I don't know if it's real or not. I'm not going to subject myself or my dog to it unnecessarily. We have uh, the explosives disposal unit for that. And uh, it, it looks real. It's wrapped in uh, what appears to be authentic wrapping. We've got here what appears to be authentic uh, detonating cord. And uh, we could probably go over, pick it up, throw it in the trunk, and away we go. But uh, we've got the disposal unit guys for that for a reason. and. Uh, We'll let them take care of it. Scary stuff. Check it out. What's that? Did you already check it out? She's right over there. Does, did you look? Oh. Yeah, we got a piece of the cord right here. Oh, that's not the way the call came in on the screen. I guess you don't have a workstation. We got a piece of the cord right here. It looks like the fuse went out. He stomped it out. Oh, is that right? Yeah. What did you see? It was a fire under there, so I went there, to, I mean, he's a friend of mine, the, the one who hired the car. So I said, what's going on? Some bodies tried to fire, you know? And uh, when I was there, I see the dynamite, so I go with my leg and I take off the fire, that's it. I mean, I was like, if it was more close, it could explode on me. Hmm. Where's your friend? He's inside, he's working. Oh, what's the guy that owns the place? See him, you know? and, uh, could probably, like I say, very easily just pick it up and carry it out of here. But we've uh, contacted the explosives disposal unit. They will attend, and uh, they're the expert with handling this stuff. And uh, they may do the same. They may just walk up, pick it up, and throw it into their vehicle and drive away, or they may use a robot or whatever. I have an explosives magazine in the back of my vehicle because the dog I have is an explosives detection dog. And uh, I carry explosives with me for training purposes with the dog. And what I have here is a little jar marked debt cord. And in here is uh, a few strands of actual debt cord. And this here is a piece of debt cord from underneath the Camaro. And it's the, uh, it's the same stuff. So we're looking at uh, the real McCoy here. And uh, had it gone off, it uh, I'm sure would have ruined the Camaro over there. And, if somebody was in the Camaro, then we could be looking at uh, somebody being seriously injured. Uh, in this particular case, uh, one of the gentlemen that's a friend of the owner seen it burning and physically walked over himself and stepped on it and put the fire out. And uh, he's a very lucky man. You don't, uh, you don't mess around with that type of stuff. But uh, he did, and he got away with it this time. You guys want to print it or anything? Oh, I wouldn't mind. I doubt if it'd be any good, though. Half that stuff's covered in... Um, it's kind it's of a kind waxy, of waxy film on it. Yeah. yeah. No, I wouldn't bother. Um, no, you're not going to gonna... worry about it? No, I'm not going to worry about that. OK. What we'll do is we'll take that out of the way, then we'll uh, we'll check the rest of the car out for you as well. Appreciate that. stuff? Yeah, I haven't seen that before myself. 96, right? Dino, Dino. We had a theft of that not that long ago. That That's stuff what there. I would have figured. We had a theft of that stuff. 
Okay, we'll do a search of the vehicle for you as well. Thank you so much. Basically what's happening now is our explosives disposal unit has arrived and they are searching the area around the vehicle and uh, they'll remove the package and uh, they'll be dealing with it. What they'll probably do is bring it back to their area and detonate it to get rid of it. What we retrieved here from underneath a Camaro was a stick of Dino Gel Extra Gel 75, um, which is a one by eight stick of uh, nitro-based explosives, a dynamite, if you think of it as a dynamite. Uh, fastened to that was a length of yellow cord, which is a detonating cord. It's a 40 grain detonating cord. Um, it's a little different way of trying to make this function, uh, but one stick underneath the car certainly would have caused some, uh, some damage to the passenger side. On our way to a uh, drug overdose at the West Hotel. So that's all we know so far. That's a drug overdose on the second floor. So we'll see what happens when we get there. Okay, do you want to go down and uh, show the ambulance? Ambulance? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're on the way. Bud, come on. We got, uh, he's out, guys. Oh, yeah. There he comes. Come on, buddy. Stay with us, okay? Yeah, he was right out, not breathing, nothing. Come on, man. Stay awake, eh? Stay awake or you're not going to make it. That's a bit big. Do you got a small one? Come on, man. Stay with us, eh? He was, uh, he's cold, eh? Yeah. Uh, he's... Just, yeah, he's got a pulse. I just need some... I need some O2 in this. There he comes. Jesus, good thing they got here now. This guy's almost gone. Got a pulse? Yeah, we're getting a little action here now. Yeah, I got a pulse. Yeah, yeah don't, don't. Yeah. Let's move him up on the bed a bit. Want to move him onto the floor? You'll probably want him onto the floor, eh? Just watch for needles. There's a needle on the thing behind you. There's needles all over the counter here. No, we should put him up on the bed. You want to move him? Yeah, I've got to get him up flat. Watch for needles, eh? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh. He's got a good pulse. He was gone. He got a punch earlier, so uh, he's not that far gone yet. He's got the spoon out there and everything. He's doing heroin and whatever. Good, strong pulse. Yeah. He's warm again. He was freezing when we got here. This guy, if we wouldn't have got here in the time we did, he'd probably be dead. So with a little bit of luck, he'll come out of it and got, uh, live another day. Pretty strong though, pretty strong folks. Yeah. They may want to put him down the floor, but, huh? They probably will. See if he's gonna, I just want to see if he's gonna breathe. See, I can see his pulse. There he goes. Yeah, he's breathing. Really slow respirations, though. Just do it for him. Oh, yeah. Um, I did get some ID here. Pupils are dilated. He's barely here. What'll 
what'll happen is the ambulance will come in and they'll give him some Narcan and he'll be back with us in probably five minutes. He'll come okay. to and he'll probably want to fight when he comes to. Keep back. There's one. How old would you say he is? 35? 30, 35. Feel him? He's still cold in the head. Hey guys. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi guys. Hello. He was uh, right out of it and cold, not breathing, anything. I thought he was gone. OK, is there anybody who uh, was around who may have uh, seen when he went down? Currently, oh. someone, whoever called it at the desk, just uh, uh, he's got a good pulse. Uh, he's not breathing well on his own. He didn't have a pulse when we got there? here. It didn't seem like it anyways. Has he got an airway in, guys? Yes, yeah. he does. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, ALS is right behind us, so. You got some tracks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, There's, it is. There's uh, watch for needles are all over the table there. Okay. And we don't know about the bed. We pulled them up fire. Okay. Yeah. I, I have it. Actually, I'll sneak in and take a look at mine. Sure. Yeah. He's banging. But he's uh, right. responded, he's got a good pulse. Okay. 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 Very cool. Okay. 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 Yeah, you overdosed and oh, 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 easy. Slow down. Easy. You overdosed and stopped breathing, okay? Yeah. yeah. Trust us in that. Yeah. Well, when you went to sleep tonight, you stopped breathing. <laughs> how, how much heroin were you doing? Heroin. That's that drug stuff. You know, yeah. there's stuff on the counter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Hey, Narcan started? the wonder drug. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Mm -hmm. and didn't even get in. You didn't get it into him, eh? No, it's just a bagging. Good bagging. It's the same thing. You just got to do it for a while. Yeah. Good. 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 What's your name? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, don't have how much heroin did you do tonight? How much heroin did you do tonight? So, just a little I'm bit. Okay, I'm well, whatever yeah, it was, was I good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big sleep. Yeah, but you were sleeping a little bit too much. Okay. Can you pass me a cuff, partner, and I'll get yeah. pressure on it here. There you go. We had a male. There is probably 30 to 35. Um, they were having a drug party. Obviously, there's uh, needles all over the counter and. Uh, Supposedly his friend got freaked out and ran out and left him there and phoned the ambulance and said uh, his buddy was dying or ODing. So we got in there. He was cold. Uh, he had no pulse and he wasn't breathing. And if his pulse was there, it was really, really minimal. Well, as soon as we bag and mask him, which gives him a high concentration of oxygen, that uh, brings him back pretty quick. So the heat gets back into his body. And I love the part where he was just sleeping. Yeah. I was just sleeping, he said. <laughs> it was going to be a long sleep if we didn't show up. Yeah, usually they have to uh, bring him around with Narcan. It's a drug that they give to all the heroin users, and it brings them back out of their high. It brings them down. They don't like it, so they want to fight you when they come to. Uh, they didn't have to use it this time. We bagged him so long that he got enough oxygen back into his system that it brought him around, and all the motion and movement woke him up, so that's good. Right now we're on a uh, complaint where someone was trying to break into some cars in the uh, Newton area of Surrey. The uh, dog man is out uh, 
on the track and uh, sounds like he's got a really hot trail right now. The dog's moving at a good clip. Uh, right now the track's going through an alley behind some houses and we're just setting up a perimeter sort of at the far south end of that alley. The dog man's coming towards us. Hopefully if um, the bad guy's still on the move he won't be able to make it past our point uh, at this end of the alley and uh, the dog will catch him somewhere in between our point and uh, where they are now. Right at the end of the alley. There you go. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get the back. My girlfriend is at the very end of this alley. Can okay. I just prove that to you? We'll see what we can prove in a minute here. For right now, you're under arrest for theft. Okay. Theft of what, though? Breaking into a vehicle. But I swear to God, I can, I can walk down to the end of here, and it's my girlfriend's house. Her name's Karen. I don't doubt that. That doesn't mean you weren't up a little further breaking into cars. Check track again. Yeah, go ahead. Check it over. I haven't broken into any okay. cars. This is do you what want, I understand. Do you want to call a lawyer? Yes. Okay. Can I just get a hold of my Hang girlfriend? Hang on. It's right up the street from here. You're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yeah. I was coming from another friend's house. His name's Craig. I don't know exactly. If we stop by Craig's house, will he confirm that? Well, he's probably gone to bed by now. It's okay. I don't mind waking him up. All I know is I'm hanging to my whoa, whoa, girlfriend's whoa. Oh. house. What's, Chris, what's Craig going to say if we show up at his house? I was looking for Bear, Bear Creek Market. I don't even know where that Why is. Why would you be looking for Bear Creek Market? Because that's where I'm supposed to find my girlfriend, and she's right there. And oh, she's you just said, right now. And you just said that you're heading there. to your girlfriend's house. So are you going to the market or to her house? I was going to the market to call her at her house. If her, but her house is right there. She's Why wide awake. Why wouldn't you just go to the house? Because I didn't want to like just knock on her door and stuff like that. I'd rather just call her first, right? Okay. So if we go to Craig's house, what do you think he's going to say? I don't know. Well? I was just walking from down there, man. Like, I'm not doing nothing. You can okay. totally check. Are you walking, were you walking from down there or were you walking from Craig's house? I was just walking from that direction, man. Okay. I was just looking for Were you actually coming from house, Craig's house or were you coming from somewhere else? I was just coming from my girlfriend's house, man. Coming from your girlfriend's house? Yeah, and I was supposed to meet some guy at Bear Creek Market. I got lost, and I'm going back. Well, why does your story keep changing here? Well, I haven't broken into any cars. Okay, like, uh, we, we aren't even any. talking. We aren't even talking right now about you whether or not you broke into any. Like we aren't even talking right now about whether or not you broke into any cars. We're talking about all the. Understand. We're talking about all the bullshit you're giving me. You expect me to believe that you haven't broken into any cars? Yet you're lying to me about all sorts of crap right now. Well, I know is so I'm going up to my girlfriend's house. You can give her a call. You can confirm that I was there just like about 10, 15 minutes ago, and I just want to go back. Well, what I know is we had a report of people breaking into cars. We had a dog track right to you. You and thought that hang on, was hang some on. other guy or something. We had a dog track right to you. And I also know that you're giving me all sorts of crap. You're telling me you're coming from Craig's house. You're telling me you're coming from that way. You're telling me you're coming from your girl's house up there. I'm walking down a back alley, right? But well, lots of people I don't understand. Hang, hang on. Lots of people walk down back alleys, but imagine you're one of us for a sec. We've just had someone break into a vehicle, take off, dog tracks to a person in this alley, and this person starts lying to us about where they're coming from. What do you think you would think well, if you were... I've just had so many trouble what? with you guys before, and I just don't... I just want to get home to my girlfriend's so house. She can confirm. She just is at the end of this alley, okay? I went leaving... Well, if she can confirm all this stuff, why did you lie to us in the first place? Well, I don't know. I was just... Because I just... I just want to hurry up and get the hell home, man. I'm, it's been a late night for me, and I just want to go home, man, and get some sleep. Okay. And I'm not doing anything. Well, it's like, you can sleep in the back of the police car. Straight down through in the alleyway, uh -huh. and then he's stationary at that gray fence, and there's nothing in the 360 degree around where he was standing. Yeah, we had, uh, I saw the alley there, so we parked right on 140th at the end of the alley, so we couldn't cut across there. Well, what he's doing, he's, you can see him where he's kicked stones out all in the area, right at the corner. And there's nothing, just, there's nothing anywhere past that point where Just waiting for us to leave, eh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, we've uh, dealt with this guy before. Which is, okay. Yeah. Okay, Good so stuff. known? Yeah, I, I can't remember right now what it's for. As soon as I saw him, I recognized him. And, I gave the name uh, again, it clicked, but... This dent has been there, but these these have never been there, and I'm very specific about that, because... Because we're always checking, because it because always happens. Because this, 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 this happened the last time my car was broken into. But these new ones... 
So you've been having lots and lots of problems around here? Yeah, like the, those people, their trailer's been done. This is, car has been done twice. I've had this car since November, and it's been broken into twice. That this I know one's of. been broken into twice for sure. Mine has been broken into twice. The, the red truck has been broken into once. We know that the the house that's been sold down there, mm -hmm. they had their car actually smashed three times. Brad and Mona, who live in there, have a van that they now park in their garage. Yeah, and that they can't. Their have, locks are totally broken. They can't. They have to go in through one one side. Now, are they the actually door. stealing the vehicles, or just stealing stuff from just inside? Stealing. Uh, we know there's nothing in there's their car nothing, to steal. No one no. ever keeps anything in here anymore because it's been broken into so many times. It just makes me so mad to know that this kid's gonna get off when. He had to wake me up. He had to bring out how many of your guys. Mm -hmm. No, we, well, it's frustrating for us too when we deal with people exactly. uh, over and over again. Uh, we had a chase with him about a, I don't know, a year ago. He had a stolen car they just uh, ripped off. <sighs> and, uh, you yeah, know, we'll deal with this one. He'll get again. So he, what about he was Otis just, then? Because that wasn't there before, so doesn't that somehow prove that, that something he was happened, trying? Yeah that he was trying to do something. Like they're looking for proof about this guy. Yeah. And you couldn't you couldn't break into my car on that side. It's always been broken in on this side because I don't have the white. Well, I'm sure they could the do here. <laughs> Yeah. He, um, you know, like I said, he's been in trouble for this sort of thing before. And also uh, he was just telling me he has a warrant out for him. So um, hopefully he'll be going to jail for a little while anyway. I had to meet someone. I got a phone call. Well, there's an amazingly similar description with the jacket and everything. I know what I did in the past, but you could check my record, man. I haven't been doing nothing in the past year and a half. Okay. Don't you think it's a little too coincidental, though, with the time, the area, the track leading right to you, the jacket? Considering I was about two or three houses away from where I was headed. Not to mention all the lies. Well, I... I just don't really like talking to cops at this time of the morning because I know all they're going to be looking for. You know how many times this has happened to me? It's the second time I'm in a serve protect where I haven't even done anything wrong, man. This is the second time. What were you on for before? The last time, me and my buddy were just walking down the street. It's because it's like 2, 3 in the morning. We get pulled over. We get thrown on the ground. I have the dog chomp on me. And then they let us go, exactly what you're going to say to me now. They're like, oh. They're like, yeah, yeah, we know you did it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Mike. Well, what did I, like... Was that, uh... Yeah, I swear to God. Man. Was that one where you ran and the dog grabbed you just after you went through a yard into a cul-de-sac? Something like that. We yeah. got released you, that night, you, though. you or your buddy had a little backpack with some stuff in? Nope. No backpacks, no tools, no nothing. We no, I'm not seeing any tools. All I had money on me was to go call a cab. We were, like, three steps away from a phone. Where was that? What? And then chomp right on the ground, right? And then... They're all like, oh, why are you steaming? I go, well, because when I see someone running after me with a dog, I'm going to start running away. I don't like dogs, right? Mm -hmm. and Do you remember what the street was or where that was? That was in Fraser Heights. Fraser Heights. And I live in Guilford. That's where I originally lived. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, we'll catch you later. But, uh, uh, oh, shit, man. I got to make Will I get released in the morning? It's up to the judge. I don't know. I don't know what the circumstances are on the uh, beanie. You guys had a warrant, right? nope. gonna, are you going to write that down? Um, you can mention that to the fellow who's going to be taking you in. Open the door, Len. What do you want at midnight? What do I want at midnight? Yeah. I want you to stop making so much noise down here. I haven't made any noise. I don't want to hear that. I was here last week and you told me the same thing. I did not make any noise your voice, last keep week. Keep your voice I down. I haven't made any noise this week. Keep your voice down. OK. Now, are you harassing the lady upstairs? She's saying that you're harassing her. Hmm? This is ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry, but if you are, you're committing a criminal offense. Yeah, I, I, okay, what, 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 do I, what do I have? What do I have to defend me? 
defend you. Who do I have to defend me? Okay? Because I'm, I, I'm sitting in my living room doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my living room doing absolutely nothing. Keep your voice down, please. Okay? Now, are you having a problem? These pro guys were here. Keep your voice down, four, please. Four, four officers called me out of bed last week. Yeah, I was here. To tell me that I was making noise. You were? Okay. In bed? Listen to in me. Okay. Asleep? Listen to me. Listen to me, okay? Now, it's the second time we've been here in a week, okay? This lady says you're making a lot of noise when we've had other complaints, okay? Now, you've got to keep it down. I understand that you've been evicted out of here. You're, you're moving at the end of the month. Okay, have you got a place to go? No. Not yet? You're looking? Okay. I just want to make sure that there's no more problems, okay? Is there going to be any more problems? <laughs> All we're asking is that... Was there any problem? Listen, listen, there's, there's... What do you want me to do? Listen what to me, do? listen to me. Lay down and die? No, I don't, want you, no I, don't, I don't want you to do that, Len, but there's four families all living in the same building here, yeah, okay? Yeah. So you've all got to live together. And, and, and nobody else has a problem. And respect each other's privacy. You wouldn't like it if people were waking you up in the middle of the night or playing music loud, would you? Do, do you hear any music? No, I don't. This is what I asked last week. Do you hear any music? Okay. There is no music. Okay. I have not had my I'm stereo on. In my eviction notice, it says drums, okay? You see those drums over there? Those are definitely okay. drums, yeah. All right. I have not played those drums in six months. Okay. Okay? Okay. I can prove, I can Shh. prove I do not have my yeah, cymbals. We're not deaf, man. I can hear you, okay? Listen, I'm just going to explain one thing to you, okay? When you're making noise in here, even though you're in your own home, okay, and you can do what you want in your own home. Oh, can I? Yes, you can. Yes, but what can I do? But listen, but under the criminal code, there's a section called mischief, and that's interfering with the lawful enjoyment of other people's property, which means if you're making too much noise and other people are bothered by it, then that's a problem. So all we're asking... And I have not had my music Okay, so at all, all we're asking... At all, period. Yeah. So all we're asking is that you keep it down. Okay. I and, feel and I'm we being harassed. And we won't be back. I feel I'm being harassed. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but the fact is we get complaints and we have no, to act okay. on them. Okay, what under the criminal code do I have to uh, say that I am being harassed? By who? Who's harassing you? You. I'm harassing you? Well, no, you've been no. here tonight. That's you've right. You've been here last week. That's you right. You were here... You were here three I'm, weeks listen, ago, on and on Well, and I on. wasn't here three weeks and, ago. And, and not, not personally. I'm not saying personally. All I'm saying is that, you know, I have not done anything. I'm not, I have not done anything. This is my home. Okay, look, I'm going to let I, you. I am listen. sitting here. I'm going to leave. watching television. I have done nothing. Okay. And, 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 and I have you people at my door telling me that I am doing something wrong. Okay. And I have not done anything wrong. Okay, listen, all I'm asking is I'm gonna leave you alone. You can go to bed or do whatever you're doing as long as you're not bothering anybody else and nobody's bothering you. If somebody's bothering you, you feel free to call us. Okay. I don't have a telephone. You don't have a phone? Well, you can make arrangements to get there. If I had a there. telephone, okay. I'd be calling about her doing laundry at 1.30 in the morning. Okay. Then I'd be calling you. Okay. You say, hey, you know, on and on and on. All right, okay, look, guys, let's get it right, okay? No, I've, I've got it right. I know the story, okay? Do you? Mm-hmm. I'm wrong. I didn't say you were wrong. If you were wrong, you'd be coming with me. Well, tell me. Well, I don't want to have to do that. Do you want to come with me? I haven't done nothing. Okay, so all I'm asking is that you get along with them for as long as you're here, okay? You're two weeks you got. So I mean, You're moving in two and weeks? Then, and then what? Well, then you won't have a problem anymore and with the lady what? upstairs. Okay. You have a problem with this lady so and the other three people. And then what's she going to do with the next people who move in well, here? Well, that's not your problem. That's not your problem then, is it? Okay, but you do not yell through the floor. You do not yell through the wall. Now, do we understand each other? No more problem? And we well, will not be here bothering you? We understand each other. I didn't do anything. We'll leave you alone for night, Len. And hopefully we won't be back. Okay? All right, good night. We're just with one of our undercover officers here who's uh, been working on an investigation in which he had uh, some information from a person in regards to a small marijuana grow operation in the middle of a uh, well-forested area. So we've been uh, looking through the bush here for a while trying to find this and uh, we'll keep going until we get it. Bingo.
How many planes do you figure? Uh, a dozen good sized ones anyway. They, uh, they're fairly big actually, eh? For, uh, for being outside, yeah. Yeah, for an outdoor one here. Uh, you think that, well, it was a little difficult to get into. It's still public access. Mm -hmm. Really well hidden here. You can see why uh, it's gotten this big without anyone else finding it and ripping it off. Yeah, what do you figure those are? Three and a half, four feet? Yeah, that, maybe even bigger, eh? It's that big a one, hollow there. The big one there is about uh, six and a half feet. Yeah. It's taller than I am. So how did you uh, get onto this? Uh, basically, it was a member of the general public uh, came forward. He was a little reluctant to, uh, to talk to a uniform member. Uh, he didn't want anything, uh, any involvement with him just because uh, he was scared of maybe some sort of retribution from whoever's responsible for the grow operation here. So uh, I went over and spoke to him in, uh, in plain clothes and uh, went over and spoke with him. And he led me uh, through here. Uh, obviously, I had to have him show me because there's no way I probably would have found it all by myself. And uh, it, it's a big help to us, eh, when members of the general public come forward and are able to uh, assist us in locating these. He's obviously a little concerned about the impact on the neighborhood uh, that uh, this type of activity brings about, I guess I should say, yeah. the type of people that uh, are attracted to this uh, when we're culture. When we're coming through the bush there, you could see all sorts of passive and uh, recently cut through the bush, and uh, I guess there's a good chance that there's a lot more of these little... Uh, Plots in the uh, in the area here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they probably got three or four set up uh, just in this vicinity. Yeah. Well, it's a good example of where you know we have to depend on the uh, people in the community to help us because there's no way we could uh, could ever have found this on our own. What will happen here is uh, we'll be seizing the uh, drugs. There's um, really not a lot we can do with an investigation like this as to uh, trying to identify uh, the persons responsible for growing the marijuana. Once we get this out of here, it'll all be made an exhibit and eventually uh, destroyed locally at our office. It, uh, it gets burnt. That's a, look how thick that stock is, eh? That's, a, that's been here for quite a while. Yeah. There's a bunch of uh, plastic milk jugs here. Uh, we don't know for sure why they're here, but uh, good chance that uh, whoever was growing the marijuana was hauling in chemicals and uh, nutrients for the plants there. Uh, obviously, the plants have been well looked after uh, to get to the size that they did uh, growing just out in the bush like this. So um, it's uh, no doubt that uh, those containers were used uh, to bring chemicals in. When you think about it, uh it does make you wonder about uh, how brassy some of these guys are, eh? I mean, here we are in the heart of one of the uh, major residential areas in uh, Surrey here. And uh, they've got a little marijuana grow going, and obviously it has been going for a fair amount of time to be able to reach the plants, to be able to reach this maturity. Um, it's just a prime example of uh, where this kind of stuff can happen anywhere, eh? It can be next door or... Uh, to you there. The neighbor here uh, who came forward uh, has lived in this area for uh, an extensive amount of time, goes walking through here all the time, and uh, this is the first he'd, uh, he'd seen of it. There was uh, about 15 plants here, and a rough estimate of the street value is about $1,000 a plant, so uh, you know that's a fair little sum of money that someone could have made off of this uh, marijuana here. There's a couple houses in the general area here that have been pointed out to me that may be associated to this, so uh, obviously we'll be paying a little closer attention uh, to this area than we have been in the recent past, uh, just to ensure that uh, this type of activity doesn't continue here. Um, We've seen incredible growth in the uh, number of residences that we're coming across where, they've, where they have hydroponic operations growing marijuana inside, and uh, apparently uh, British Columbia has a very good reputation for high-quality marijuana. Worldwide, yeah, it is rather amazing that uh, you know we're still coming across uh, operations like this when we have a, a you know a, our drug squad has a an entire team right now that's just dedicated uh, to uh, um, grow operations. They've uh, got themselves a nickname of the Green Team, and uh, they've been dismantling uh, you know grows in the uh, in the area of uh, you know hundreds to thousands of plants even. This for ourselves alone, just uh, in our zone with our shift, this is the uh, second grow up that we've done in three days. And uh, really, it's not uncommon for the detachment to gain information or uh, arrests on a daily basis from operations like this. In a lot of these cases, uh, it's as a result of a, an unrelated investigation, whether it's a break and enter or uh, something else that we're dealing with. But uh, also, it's very important to us that uh, we keep on getting information from the general public as to uh, what they know about, because really, without their information, we wouldn't get a, a fraction of what we do.